Manx Radio's 1 to 3, tended by Ramsey Garden Centre. Pick up your new all-season loyalty card in store today and start collecting reward points. It is just approaching 1.30. Now I'm chatting to Wendy Ramph Gerber and also to Natalie Cellamare. Did I say that right, Natalie? Yes, I can't help you it. Did. <laughs> Sorry. I mean it's just got that exotic vibe to it. Um Natalie, we've spoken to you before uh, in your role as wellbeing solutions manager at I'll Listen, of course, mental health charity over here. Super busy mental health charity, Very. obviously. Um, and so it's it's apt for you to be in here today talking about workplace well-being because obviously it's not just physical health, it's mental health. And in the workplace, things can get pretty stressy, can't they? I mean, what are some ways that we can sort of cope with this in the workplace? If you go in and you're just thinking, oh my goodness, I'm really struggling today. Are there some sort of ways that we can just quickly do something to just calm ourselves? Well, yeah, well, it's breathing. Um, t- taking some time out, going for a walk. So if you're at your desk and you may be feeling a little bit stressed or anything like that, uh, taking yourself away from that situation and go for a walk if you can. And the most important thing, and the f- one for free, is talk to somebody. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It's just talk to somebody. But Wendy, that sometimes that can actually be quite a brave step for some people to make because if you're not someone who finds it easy to communicate, mm. then actually going up and talking to someone can be itself be quite a challenge, can't it? It can, absolutely. I think it's finding, you know, those people that you trust and people that, you know, are there for you, that you can have that conversation when times do do get difficult. Um, and that only happens through through conversation, really, and creating that environment where people can talk openly in a safe space and not feel they're going to be judged or somebody's just there to listen because we all need that sometimes don't we Mm. we just want someone to listen not ask questions not interrupt but just listen and I think creating that space and holding that space for somebody is really important Um, so yeah so creating that environment that enables that I think is is the starting point to be fair and how do we do with regards to uh, businesses on the island? How good at we are we in the workplace at actually creating that environment? I think it varies, to be fair. From my experience, um, in terms of my own kind of where, where I've been in, in, the, in the corporate culture space over the years, it has varied from, from organisation to organisation. And I think some people do that better than others. But just picking up on what Nat said earlier in terms of involving people, so giving them a voice um, and creating those opportunities as part of the the cultural aspect in the workplace to to enable them to do that. So an example would be creating sessions on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis where staff get together and they share kind of openly in, in that space, whether it's with the HR Um, you know, the HR group or whether it's with senior management or whether your executive team creates that space in the workplace environment for people to come together and just talk about how's the month been, what's been going on, you know, what what hasn't worked, what has worked. And I'm not talking about, you know, things necessarily work-related in the day-to-day. I'm just talking about how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. How are things going? You know, what can we make, what can we do to make the place um, a happier or friendlier place or, you know, getting people involved. I think it's easy just to kind of sit back and go, oh, well, let's do this and let's do that and do it to people. But if you're bringing people along with you on the journey and you're involving them, then it doesn't become, it becomes an organisational cultural yeah. mm-hmm. culture, doesn't it? It doesn't become and it a be, and it coming be from fun. the top. Absolutely. It absolutely, absolutely fun. Be fun. It could be something like teams having a competition who can drink the most water or how many steps they've done that day, that week, that month. You know, you could do everything now, put it on Strava and have the real good competition about it. Um, but yes, it doesn't have to be these big gestures. It can be the small things. I mean, like walking meetings, that's a really good thing. And it's really important that we see like green and blue spaces and colours. Um, and that really stabilises your mood. Um, vitamin D, yes, we are. We don't have very much of it here on the island. But when you see it, get out in that sun. <laughs> Yeah, you're so right. And that this can have a huge effect outside of the workplace. It's yes. like a trickle down effect, isn't it? So we spend so many hours of our day yeah. in the workplace, mm-hmm. whether it's an office or construction site or whatever, but then we take it home with us. Absolutely. And it's also the other way around as well. So if you are particularly concerned about the cost of living, that's going to put extra stress on you. So you're going to work, you might be doing extra hours to, you know, overtime, perhaps you get paid for, or the volume of work that you've got, 
or maybe you're learning something new and you're studying and that's having another detrimental effect to your mental health. So you might have uh, health issues. There might be somebody at home that's got health issues that depends on you. The list can go on and on. And we all have life events and we all have different and all impacts us in different ways. But at different times, there was no like book that says, right, on day one, you are going to be feeling this. It's not like that. And uh, we've got to appreciate that not one size fits all. We have to be holistic. We have, it's a move. It's evolving and it's moving. And we, we just have to be really mindful of it. And it is, I, I do find it fascinating when it comes looking, obviously you have your own business, your health and wellbeing business over here. And one of the things that you mention is the fact that you want to uh, improve the health of the population and reduce the burden on the NHS because Mm. actually we are in time now, aren't we, where it is difficult sometimes to actually even get a GP appointment. So if we can do whatever we can to look after ourselves in the first place, that's got to make a difference in itself, hasn't it? Absolutely. I'm I'm very much for this kind of integrated, personalised care approach. So yes, the NHS, NHS is there and it serves its purpose and it's great, but you're right, there is a burden on that. And I think that's where... Things like holistic well-being and all the fantastic services that we've got on the island in their well-being space can really, really help to fill those gaps. Um, and by doing that, you're then creating the self-management um, in terms of your own health. So rather than going to the GP and going, oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not feeling great today. And the GP is like, well, what's wrong? You know, you can actually go and speak to somebody and go, I'm not feeling great today. And they can sit down with you. And again, it's creating that space and that environment where somebody can have the conversation and actually go through, for instance, a full health history so that people can start to understand they might have a headache today or they might have a migraine or they've just not been sleeping really well. But rather than giving somebody a tablet or a prescription or medication, what are the other things that we can educate and empower people with to start to take some of that self-ownership and that responsibility back? Um, So, yeah, I'm very much supportive of like that personalized, integrated approach to health and well-being, because I do think there's a big burden on the NHS. And why would we not work together together? You know, why would we not pull on each other's skills and experiences that we've got on island? And that's the thing. There are so many groups popping up now that can help with this. We're going to talk about this more in just a few moments. Manx Radio's 1 to 3, tended by Ramsey Garden Centre. Pick up your new all-season loyalty card in-store today and start collecting reward points. Uh, Wendy Ramp-Gerbert, you are the Joint Vice Chair, aren't you, of uh, a forum which is the Positive Health and Wellbeing Forum. Tell us a little bit about the forum first. Um, yeah, sure. So um, the forum is so part of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's a subcommittee of the Chamber. Um, and we're a group of um, collective well-being practitioners who've all got our own businesses that come together on a monthly basis. We meet up and we talk about all things well-being, really. Um, and so, yeah, so in terms of who sits around the table, we've got everybody from nutritionists to um, somebody who does soundology and we've got kind of covering all sectors really of the Isle of Man's health and well-being space. I think that's the thing isn't it Nat because workplace well-being or well-being in general there's so many different elements to it it's physical and it's mental but at the same time there's so many different ways that you can improve your physical and mental health it sort of depends on what works for you really doesn't it? Absolutely and that's Wendy's then referred to all the, all the people that come to this forum and some of them are free, some of them are paid services, some are very holistic, um, science-based um, and like we said before, not one size fits all. So there's mm-hmm. some, something for somebody and with this conference that we're doing, we, we, we've re- we're represented so many so many different ways and I didn't realise how much, how much we've got access to on the island. Um, so I'm, I'm really pleased about that and that's why I think it's really important that people are aware of this and we are looking at doing a directory mm-hmm. yeah um that'd be super helpful because yeah. i think that's the thing isn't it a lot for a lot of people it's knowing where to start and it can be quite overwhelming but that's why this conference is a good idea so uh, tell us about this conference then wendy so um so yeah so the wellbeing conference it's taking place on the 30th of november at um the palace and um it's a conference that's been run over the years through um public health have done it previously um and this year chamber chamber of commerce have taken on um taken it on to to organize it and pull it together um and so yeah it's um you know open to anybody that's really interested in well-being in the workplace um whether you're a big organization or a small organization um and we're all coming together on the 30th to talk about 
well-being in the workplace and how we can support um, organizations in either implementing a well-being workplace um, strategy or looking at what they've got and how we can support them in terms of areas that they they need additional support with or where we can maybe you know put some of our members in touch with them to to help them with their well-being strategy so it should be a good day we've got quite a good lineup for the day um, starting with our leadership breakfast first thing in the morning yeah. And then, um, yeah, as I said, lots lots lined up for the day um, and lots for people to then hopefully take away with them afterwards. So I suppose now it's sort of providing tools, isn't it, for yes. employers, but then potentially employees as well to go to their employers with and say, can we look at doing this for the workplace? Yes, and we've mentioned small or large organisations, whether it's a corporate or construction, we're trying to vary all different sectors and industries. Um, so it's something for, for, for everybody. Um, so for instance, we've got um, a session on supporting employees going through the menopause. Um, we've got Employee Benefits Isle of Man representative with, with a panel. And we've got a, a really a nice group of people to discuss about their well-being journey within the workplace, what worked for them, what didn't work so well, what's had the most impact, what's the measurement. So we've got people like Swage Lock, um, Hopes and Dreams, PDMS and Zurich, of course, who are sponsoring the whole event. So we're really thankful to them. So we're going to have a lot, a lot of representation there. We're going to have stalls there as well. So we're going to have that Manx Wildlife Trust. You're probably thinking, what's that got to do with well-being? Well, that's a lot. We've just been talking about bird watching <laughs> it's relaxing it's distraction and also volunteering is really good for your well-being um we've got simply sleep because sleep is very very important if we don't get our sleep our mental health is impacted and um, we've got zurich's obviously going to be there talking about financial well-being we've got the nsc going to be represented as well life after loss disability awareness and also the well-being partnership which is now in the west the south and the north um driven by max care so that they're, they're going to be there telling what what they can do for the community as well as the workplace. So we've got a vast amount. Yeah, of there's so there. much out there. But as you said, you know, you can actually look after yourself as well by just getting outside. Green and blue, very important. So Wendy, if someone's listening and they think this conference sounds perfect for me right now or for my workplace, how do they get involved? Do they just turn up? Do they have to register? Yeah, so really easy. Uh, go to Chamber of Commerce's website um, and you can book your place um, and get your ticket there and then just sign up through Eventbrite and hopefully see you on the day. It does sound like a fabulous event. It really does. Um, what sort of advice would you leave everyone with that's listening right now then now to just sort of make their Wednesday feel a bit better for themselves? Oh, to feel a bit better. Well, I was going to going to touch on with the clocks going back and the different yeah. daylight and night time and the, try and get try and avoid artificial light as much as possible because that really does mess with the timing in your brain and that sometimes affects your sleep. So fresh air and natural daylight as much as possible. But yeah. don't, fall, don't fall over the furniture, though, by turning all the lights off. <laughs> Wendy, what about you? What yeah, you I, I, would, I would second that, Christy. I would say definitely, um, you know, avoid the blue light, mm -hmm. get out, get your bit of fresh air, bit, bit of exercise, um, and just enjoy days like today, really. You know, yeah. lovely afternoon, um, and you've got nature on your doorstep, so why wouldn't you use it? We're so just lucky. Just get out yeah. there. Yeah, it's all out there, isn't it? It really yeah. is. Well, the conference is November the 30th. Uh, many thanks for coming in and telling us all about it. And if you missed my chat with uh, Nat and Wendy today, don't you worry. I will uh, put a little video on and also we will podcast our conversation as well. Thanks for being with us. Uh, have a very happy Wednesday. Thank you very much.